When you find something that you're like, oh my gosh, that was great. That brought a bunch of new people to my email list. That brought a bunch of new people into my community. How can I do that same thing again? That's going to bring people forward. Hi, everyone. We are so excited to be back with you today uh, for another episode of Startups in Stilettos. Jess, it's so great to be with you today for our very, very exciting episode. How are you? I'm doing okay. You know, it's been a little crazy in the world of (laughs) this LA family. We've had my dad who's had surgery. Alexa had hand, foot, and mouth. I got a virus. You know, we're still keeping a business up and running. So it's been a little hectic here. It's been a bit of a season this past week, but I'm so happy that I could join the two of you today. And Christina is someone I follow on Instagram. So I'm really excited to meet the woman behind the brand and get into today's conversation. That sounds great, Jess. And I think you'll also discover that Christina also has had a few things happen recently. So it's all relatable for all of us. That is for sure. And As we jump in, Christina Bartold is the CEO of The Social Snippet, a social media and podcasting agency that helps entrepreneurs and small businesses grow their communities online. She is a lover of all things connection, networking, and growth. When she is not helping entrepreneurs show up more authentically online, she can be found hanging out with her husband and pup, enjoying a hazelnut latte or watching one of my all-time favorites, The Crown. Welcome, Christina. It's so great to see you. Hey, I'm so excited to see all of you as well. And Jessica, so good to, to finally meet you. I also follow you in Fangirl. So I'm excited to, to be in your presence today and, and jam out. That sounds great. Christina, I do have to drop in. This is a little role reversal. I absolutely loved being on your podcast not too long ago when you joined us in the Phoenix metro area. So that was a blast. And Having said that, I did learn quite a bit about your business. Uh, why don't you tell our audience listeners and um, those newbies to the Christina world a little bit more about your business? Yeah. So I'm the CEO of The Social Snippet. And, and uh, like Carlin said, we're a social media and podcasting agency. But why I'm so passionate about this work is that I think it is absolutely imperative for folks to be having community online. And so what we love doing is we love working with our clients, whether that's in our done for you social or done for you podcasting, helping them build like a huge community of their dreams that they're really excited about. Um, so I am obsessed with the work that I get to do. I'm always like, oh, I'm not going to go to another in-person client meeting and I'm going to delegate to my team. And then I'm all in because I just am so obsessed with how we get to support our clients. Can you walk us through the kind of work that you do with your clients? Yeah. So really, really focused on, on kind of done for you, uh, social media and podcasting. But really what we do is we, we work kind of one-on-one with clients to figure out exactly who their ideal target market is, right? Often I find business owners feel like they're on social media and they're just like throwing spaghetti at the wall and they're hoping someone will see it and someone will enjoy it. Um, but really getting finessed on where your ideal client is hanging out, what platform are they on, how do we maximize that, and how do we show up there so authentically that your ideal client comes running over to you. So I get to do a lot of that kind of work every day, which I, I love. That's amazing. And Christina, I think it's so confusing for so many entrepreneurs, founders, uh, CEOs in that space because you're constantly um, given all this information. Okay, show up this many times, do videos, do, do reels, do this, don't do this, don't do this, do these hashtags, don't do this. How could, how do you address some of that with your clients on a day to day or week to week or month to month basis? How do you keep that all organized and communicate effectively to guide your founders, your clients down the right path in order to get the most visibility? So, and maybe this is a controversial point I'm about to make, but I always tell my clients like to ch- try to ignore as much of the noise as they can, because you'll talk to somebody and, you know, Carlin, maybe they'll talk to you and, and you'll be like, oh, reels. That's how I grew. And I love reels. And I love showing up and talking at the camera. Cause like, I'm so beautiful and smart and like people want to hear from me. And that's, so maybe that's what like Carlin's vibe is. And then someone else is going to come on and they're going to be like, I don't want to do reels, but they find just as much success static posts and selling in the DMs. So it's really important for us to be able to find our platforms that work really well for us. And I always say, party with your people where they're at 
And also find platforms that make you feel like this is fun for you. So if you love showing up on Instagram stories and that feels natural for you, go all in, lean into that. If LinkedIn feels great, go there. Like find the places that you feel most at home online and make that your community rather than focusing on the algorithm. Because even though it's important, it's not like end all be all. So Christine, I want to put you on the spot here for a second because I think I did a stories no no this past week. I Tell me. as I as I shared, it's just been a crazy week and I am part of a group where we all had to present a one minute talk. And we've been working on this talk for months and months and months. And we were told if you are not in the group and you are not ready to go when they call your name, you miss the opportunity to give your talk. So a woman I know in the group sent me an email to say, Jess, you were up in two people. Now I was already in another Zoom upstairs and I was waiting for this other person to join and he was running late. And I was like, all right, well, he's running late. I'm just going to pop out of the Zoom, go downstairs, do my one minute, blah, blah, blah. And it just felt like a true behind the scenes moment of what it really means to be an entrepreneur and trying to be a person doing all of the things that I just took out my phone. I recorded a little clip of, I just want to say a shout out to Karen for being such a rock star and having my back today. And I didn't have a call to action. I really just told the story and then cut out. And the rest of the day, for the rest of the day, I was thinking, okay, I think it's good to be someone who shows up on social media and shows it's not always perfect and glamorous all the time. And you're wearing a lot of hats. And if anybody else is wearing a lot of hats, trying to do all the things and has had someone look out for them, they know that that's such a good feeling. Or maybe they can be the person who looks out for someone next time. But I didn't do any of those things. I literally just told the story and I cut out. And I'm curious, how often do you see people miss opportunities when they post a story? And where where can we throw in a call to action or how do we even think about what that call to action should be? Well, firstly, Jessica, I just want to say, like, give yourself some grace because you're doing the most, right? And like, you can only do what you can do online. And so is it better that you showed up and it was messy and it wasn't perfect than you not showing up at all because you've got so much on your plate? Yeah, you just won. Like, so that was a win. So I just want to give you that. Oh, thank you. But in terms of stories, like... I think there's a lot of ways that you can do calls to actions that don't feel slimy. And I, that's something I hear a lot, especially from women is like being fearful of showing up online and, you know, being salesy and being slimy and really thinking about like what you're sharing is it is a gift, but you're also building no like and trust. So Jessica, when you're showing up, you're building that no like and trust, whether there's a call to action there or not, you're showing people like, you know, you're real, people are going to want to connect with you. And then it's again, reinforcing the, 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 oh, there's Jessica. This is what she does. Here's how I'm connected to her. So that when they're ready to make a purchase, they're thinking about you already. But some of the easy ways and, and quick wins, I think, on stories to, to make calls to action. One being things like the link sticker. Um, when we use the link sticker, it's, this sounds like a very basic piece of advice, but I always tell people, nobody watches your stories as religiously as you think they do. So talking about your stories once a week, or sorry, talking about your freebies or things that lead to your website once a week is really important because you're always going to be funneling in new people. I always feel annoying. I'm like, oh, I I already talked about my freebie. I talked about it six months ago. And I have to, (laughs) I must have such a big ego to think that people are thinking about my freebie for six months. (laughs) So really just showing up using things like links. The other big hack I would say for stories and and building community, um, and we'll get to all this action is the captions. People always show up talking without captions. And I message them all the time being like, captions, captions. And it's because so many people listen without sound. So you're missing out on a whole audience of people who are in a meeting and want to watch something while somebody's talking and you're missing out on, on the goods there. So putting the captions in there. And then the last one I would say as a call to action that's so important are things like polls. And why polls are so important is that people are always like, oh, polls, like I could ask a question, people will answer the question, like womp, womp. But why they're so important is it's a great way for you to be collecting data about your audience. Like you can ask them things like, hey, did you know this? Did you know this about media? Um, If you're looking to get featured, here's a question that comes up, like that kind of thing where you get to engage your audience. Um, But something I love to do is I love to ask a question and then DM 
every single person who engaged in my poll to start a conversation. Uh, I try to take it up a notch. I sometimes voice note, but I'd love to have it be a dialogue because it's not just a one way thing. I don't want people to feel like I'm talking at them. So those are just a few ways that you can kind of maximize some call stack. Those are awesome. I guess in in my situation, and I did, I think, keep that in mind, which is people who want to work with me, especially one-on-one, they need to know who I am as a person because that will give them a better picture of who I am as a coach. And they have to know that if they come with, you know, dirty dishes in the back and laundry here and they come in a towel to do a session with me, I'm going to get it because I'm a real person too. But I guess in this circumstance with what you just shared, given that the third one seems like it was the most appropriate to add, because I did add captions. And I guess in that case that we didn't need a link, would you have done, take this poll, you know, how many of you ever had someone totally save you from missing a meeting or missing a work assignment? Or how many of you have ever been the person, like, would you have done something like that? Totally. That's a good option. Another option too, for like some cross-pollination would have been to tag your friend who, who saved you so that, you know, you're getting a reshare on her page as well. But also you don't want to exhaust your audience with too many calls to action. So like, okay. you don't want to be like, Hey, d- download my freebie. Hey, uh, don't forget to <laughs> vote in my poll. Like people want lifestyle. So you, one of the things I always say about influencers is like, why we love influencers is because they're so real. So it won't be uncommon for me to post a picture of like my dog and there's no call to action there. I'm just like, Hey, my dog's so cute. Like you should, okay. think he's that cute. Right. But it's because I'm building that no like and trust. And I'll tell you just because so many times I've gotten on calls with people and they're like, oh my gosh, you have a dog. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, Patrick, German Shepherd. And I'm like, do you have my social insurance number? Like, uh, like what's back there? Uh, but it's because they've been watching. And so we're always building the narrative of our lives. And I think Jessica, what's so great about what you shared is that you're a busy mom, right? And someone who's going to work with you, they might be a busy mom. And they might not be ready to make the investment right now because there are, you know, so many like things might be going on for them, but then they see you're busy and you're still showing up and it's messy. And they're like, oh, maybe I can show up messy too. And Jessica's giving me that permission. So I I don't think it always has to have a call to action. Okay. You're awesome. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That that was great. And I love the insight (laughs) and I love the, uh, thanks. Thanks for giving us grace, Christina, to show up and be a little bit messy here and there. That feels really good, by the way. (laughs) Honestly, I love it. And I actually have a client and she won't mind me sharing this, but you know, she is like the coolest woman ever. And, but when she does discovery calls, she lives in Mexico. She smokes a cigarette and she's like sitting on her, like on her front porch. And I was like, Oh, I remember the first time she told me that I was like, you should like put a collared shirt on or like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, and she was like, anybody who works with me is going to be somebody who's okay with this because this is how I show up for people. And I'll answer the phone anytime that they call. And, but I built my dream life so I can live in Mexico And I want to help them do that financially. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And that reframe for me was big for me for being able to be like, oh, online, we get to be ourselves and those people will find us. That's awesome. And on that note, it's showing up, being yourself. Christina, the reason I knew some of the history of exactly where you are today and what's going on, and if you'd like to share it with our audience members, I think this is so perfect on showing up to the real life behind the scenes with Christina who I would have never known this had I not been a follower, a dedicated follower on Instagram with you and your recent um, episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I, bro- I broke my elbow. Um, I had a, a Pilates mishap. Um, but actually, like the lesson in it, which is like, I know this is very like business coachy of me to be like, but like the transformation. Um, but the transformation for me here is that I had so many things on my plate that while I was at the hospital, I was counting the things I wouldn't be able to do anymore. Like I was sitting and that was what I was worried about was I was like, oh my gosh, that email, that one's going to be lengthy to respond to without an elbow. And for the first three weeks that I was recovering, I couldn't use my right arm at all. Like, so, and I'm a like typer, like I couldn't do anything. Um, so it was such a, like a permission to let things go, but even more so it was such a reminder for us to be building our businesses in ways that aren't entirely relying on us. And so I tried to be really honest with people on social about that because I was feeling a lot of guilt about showing up and, you know, I I had surgery. I was like taking morphine for days. Like I was in bed and people would be like, Hey, are you free? Like, and I'd be like, Oh, I guess I should just try to sit at the computer and have that conversation. And I had to be honest with people. I was like, hi, I'm sleeping 22 hours a day. Like I'm not doing okay over here and I need people to be stepping up for me. And people did. And so, yeah, that I, so I totally Jessica, when you're like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, I've got this going on in my life and this is going on in my life. I was like, I didn't have an arm. Like I just appreciated a time when I could shower alone, you know? Uh. 
Oh my gosh. And I, I love, first of all, we are wishing you the speediest recovery. And I love that you are someone who shows up and shares all of the things, but that, that was, you know, pure gold. And I think oh, one of those like uh, social media shout outs, like say it louder for the people in the back of the room. I know that's like a much wordier version of what they put on social media. It's, what do you say? Like, I'm going <laughs> to say it louder for the people in the back, whatever it is. I'm not that yeah. cool to remember the actual thing, but I feel like you need to put that on a sweatshirt or a bumper sticker, like create a business that is not so reliant on you. And what a good reminder. And it's, it's hard because it, it, especially like as early stages, I'm in the, I just hit the, the second year of my business. So, um, which has been awesome, but it, early stages, you, you don't want to pay people to do things like you, you just want to do them yourself. You want to, you know, like cash in the most. And so I think really like leaning into the fact that like we're building these businesses for our lives and we didn't choose this lifestyle so that we could be tied to a desk. Um, and whatever that looks like for everybody. And for some people, maybe that does look like that. I don't know. Uh, but it doesn't for me. And so this was a huge wake up call for me. And, but also something I really, really admired about this uh, like experience was that this, and when I actually had my gallbladder out earlier this, this year, and I, I posted about it being like, hi, like, I'm like, boo, people like show up for you. And when, and like have these conversations with you, you would never have. And that's, what's so beautiful about social is you show up and you say, Hey, like, this is something I'm struggling with. And there's 10 people that have a home remedy like who are like so excited to share it with you. Or like I would, t I posted a picture and I was like in a picture with Lori Harder and someone DM'd me and they're like, you are not elevating your arm enough. Your hand's super swollen. And I was like, oh, right. But like, it's just like when we show up for each other, like how incredible that can be. And that's what I mean when I talk about community building is like, it's not about the number. Like I actually don't care that much about the number, but what I actually care about is that you got somebody in there that when you're going to sell something, someone's going to buy it because they're bought into who you are and what you offer. Right. And that's so well said. And I think that is all about the community that you build as a business. And touching on that for a minute, Christina, like, so congratulations on almost two years, right? That's as you're awesome. reflecting on that. That's so awesome. And tell us a little bit about the history and how you decided to pivot to get to that point, leaving a corporate job or, you know, what you were previously doing. Walk us on that journey for a minute. Yeah. So for me, it actually came by so honestly. I've been doing freelance social media since 2014 um, for little businesses and companies. And, but I had a nine to five and actually it's so interesting and maybe this will resonate with somebody. And if it does, let me know. But I had a nine to five that I actually loved. It wasn't like I was in a job that I hated. It wasn't bad. It was just not it. Um, so I was in this job and I it was what I thought my dream job was that I thought I would have when I was 50, I was 28, had it was like, I don't know what's next. Like, what am I going to do next? I don't know. Um, and so actually my background, my master's work is in leadership and conflict resolution. So I started run, running like webinars, doing more coaching, doing consults with folks, loved that. And I was using social media as my medium to sell. And Maria, my business partner was actually my VA. So she's making all these graphics. I'm doing all the building of community. And we had built such a strong community on my social that people were reaching out to me being like, do you do social media? Like, could you, could you do my social media? And I was like, no, no, like, no, I can't, I can't. And then finally we got enough asks that I was like, okay, like I'll try this. So we spent a few years building. We, we spent a year, I was still at my corporate job and, and also um, doing the social snippet. But what ended up happening uh, by the end was that we ended up having so many clients that I had to leave. Like it was like I had to make a choice in the night kind of thing. Um, so we've grown right now. We have about 60 clients between the podcasting and social media part of our agency. Uh, and I'm just as passionate about it as I was the first day because I just love how we get to sh help people show up online because it's such a scary place for people. And it, when we democratize it and make it something that's so fun and like you get to choose the platform you're on, like Carlin, like you kill it on LinkedIn. Like, you know, you show up and I see your audience engaging with you so much because you're such a trusted and like respectable person, right? And people buy into that. So it's like really us figuring out like where we should be. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a bit of my story. Christine, I want to chat with you a little bit about what's trending right now. And we see different updates on Instagram really weekly. So before we let you go, can you just give one tip on how we can all be using Instagram to sell? I know you talked about links earlier, captions on stories and calls to action when appropriate. But if we are selling a service, whether it's coaching, whether it's a course, a product, what is your number one tip to selling on Instagram? You're going to hate this one, but it's consistency. And the reason is, is because, and whether you choose static posts, you choose reels, you chose showing up in stories every single day, it's showing up 
consistently and talking about your message that you're building that know, like, and trust with people. When we talk about what works online, like what's going to work for me is not going to work for Carlin. Um, so what really works for me, uh, maybe this does work for Carlin, but like is, is stories. I sell best on stories. I'm dynamic. Like people like that. They buy into that. And then that's great. Um, my feed posts are fine. Like they, they do okay. And they spark conversation, but that's not my main selling point. I have a friend who has grown 80,000 followers this year, 80,000 followers this year by making consistent reels every single day. She just makes inspirational reels. She's a coach. She just does inspirational reels every single day. It's not her talking. It's like background photos with quotes. I might be, you know, 10 things to do this week about this. Like it's, it's a very, um, I don't want to say simple, but it, in, in a way it, it's simple and she's gone viral, like 80,000 followers. So what it is, is about consistency and constantly replicating the things that work. So when you find something that you're like, oh my gosh, that was great. That brought a bunch of new people to my email list. That brought a bunch of new people into my community. How can I do that same thing again? That's not super annoying. Do that same thing again. That's going to bring people forward. Um, so I would say consistency is the big one, but obviously like video content is, is like really key. And one of the things I will say is that if you can muster up the courage, which I know you can, I'm just going to say it. I know you can to show up on video and make a video of yourself talking, people buy from people. And so people get connected, whether you're a product-based business or a uh, service-based business video is key, especially right now. Those are such great tips, uh, Christina. And consistency, I hear about consistency all the time. And you're right, video, I'm like, ugh, I get asked by my social media manager all the time. She's like, I need more video clips. I need more video clips. And I'm thinking, okay. And I really, I really, I go in spurts. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm going (laughs) to do five in a row on one day. And then you won't see me again for like another month or something. And I'm like, can you use those and please spread them out over like the course of a month? (laughs) Because I really don't want to do this again. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not always fun. It's not my favorite, but it does resonate and your point's very well taken. So can I give you. one, one more little tip and then I, I can be cut off. You guys can Oscar music me off. Carlin, one of the things that I find is that people don't actually like leverage content in the smartest way because they're busy and they've got lots going on. So Carlin, you've been on a number of podcasts. You, you host podcasts, you do all that. There's an AI tool. It's called Opus, O-P-U-S. And basically what you do is a pretty inexpensive, I think it might be $20 USD a month, which is like a thousand Canadian dollars. Um, but 20, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, it's like $20 USD a month and you can drop your clip, your links in there of like YouTubes that you're on or a podcast and it clips it out and puts the text on it for you. I just did it because I, I, I can't, I can't tell people to do things that I can't do myself. And so I just did it and I was so impressed by the results. That wow. is okay. Awesome. Christina, do you have any other favorite tools that you can just rattle off real quickly with what the name is and what it does? Yeah. So a big tool I love is Later, which is a scheduling platform. And I know the entrepreneurs folks are connected over there, but Later is an amazing tool for scheduling, link in bio, all of that. And it's, it's, I love it. Um, this is an obvious one, obviously, but the chat GPT, but what's important about chat GPT for folks who are hoping to use it for social media is prompt it to sound like you. So prompting it to say like, you know, write this like a social media manager, write this like a business coach. I always write, write this like a millennial blogger when I like want to write something fun. Um, but then they start everything with yo. So I, I don't know. It's, it's a hit or miss, <laughs> but you can always try to figure out what kind of works for you. Those are two that we use kind of day in and day out. Um, little other, like other AI tools, there's always new ones coming out. And so trying to test some of those things out, like if you have a problem in your business, Googling like AI tool for like even the Canva AI, like that's great. There's almost no excuse not to be posting on social. Like we have way too many exciting tools. Um, but yeah, those are some that, that come to mind. Awesome. Where can people find you? Best on Instagram. I'm at Christina.Bartold. I spell my name with a K um, and or at the social snippet. So feel free. And I would love, love, love to hear like what resonated with you and I'm just so grateful to Carlin and, and Jessica for having me. This is a, I said to Jess Milanis, I'm like, this is a little pinch me moment. This is so fun. So I'm just so grateful. Thanks, Christina. And we are so happy that you joined us today. And so many great tips. I mean, I hope, you know, for all of our listeners, you might want to save this episode and find a place if you are driving, walking, whatever you might be doing and take a moment, save this episode, get to your desk and write down some of these notes because you've offered so much valuable content here, so much great information. 
And of course, all of your contact info will be in the show notes so everybody can reach out and find you and get more uh, valuable content as they start to follow you. So thank you, Christina. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. With that being said, Jess, I just have to ask you, it's so great to be back here with you. It's been like we talked about early on, it's been a while and it's so nice to hear your updates. So tell us, can you tell us some of the other updates outside of what you launched off early in this uh, episode? Yeah. You know, I was thinking about this as we've been chatting today and I'm just so happy to be with you and see your beautiful face and hear your voice and also ask you some uh, uh, update questions. But I was thinking the way we do it here at our house is we ask, what is everybody's rose, bud and thorn? So I would say my rose, professionally speaking, was that I was accepted to write for Forbes, which is something that I've been working on for many, many years and even had a rejection along the way and did not give up. So Christina would be thrilled to know that consistency was the name of the game there. The bud is that I am getting ready to give a 50-minute version of the talk I gave back in March that we were talking about and I was planning for, and I've completely redone my slides and I've completely redone the talk. So that's what's in progress. And my thorn is that the other day I was holding the baby and I um, was trying to make her dinner and I put her in her high chair and went to go fill up a pot with boiling hot water. And then I wanted to switch to like just the room temperature water. And because it's an instant hot water and a room temperature water connected, I just forgot when I flipped the switch to, you know, get, uh, you know, did whatever I did. The water that came out was boiling, not room temperature. And my hand, I didn't realize, was just like right under the faucet. So I burned my hand and I'm trying to figure out now like how I'm going to use that story in a future talk because something that I've learned in my coaching programs that I have been in as the student is that there are stories that happen around us and to us every single day. And all of those can be learning lessons for big keynotes. We don't always have to have like the, once I was being chased by a mountain lion and blah, blah, blah. And when I, the one time I I climbed Mount Everest, like it doesn't need to be that. It could be some, like, have you ever done something as silly as burned your hand? Like, you know, so I, I have to figure out what that will be. So I guess that's also a thorn and bud, but those are just some of the things happening in uh, Jessica Abo land, which, you know, hashtag, we like to keep it real. I love, I love the rose, the bud, the thorn. I love all of that. I'm going to start with the thorn because exactly what you just said. Okay. Here's the lesson. There is a lesson. I, I was running around my desk, cleaning things up and I'm like, okay, it's Friday on Fridays. I like to clean my desk up. Now, for those of you who are listening, you know that I have a pretty monumental trip coming up, um, leaving next week. And, um, on that note, I'm running around my desk and because I'm in a hurry, because I'm in a hurry, I roll my ankle, Yeah, oh. rolled my ankle. Yes. No. Not a good time to roll your ankle. Um, so I'm thinking this is not good. I'm traveling, um, abroad next week and that is not good timing at all, especially for the event. The rose is our daughter is getting married in Italy next week. So that's the exciting part, but I think we can all relate to slow down. If I would just decide to slow down, did I really need to clean up my desk area on a Friday in seven minutes or less? Was there some competition that I decided that I was going to have every week in order to get it done? The fastest, I'm going to go to my grave saying I was the fastest desk cleaner ever, rolled my ankle four <laughs> times trying to get it done. Does that even make sense? Oh, Absolutely no. not. So the lesson, and we've talked about lessons throughout the course of today's episode, just, just pause right? Just pause, delegate things in your business, right? Take a moment. Do you have to carry six dishes to the kitchen after Mm -hmm. dinner? Can you just carry two and go back for the other two or three? You don't have to do it all at one time. So I think there's so many balances there. Like you said, that could be a thorn or that could be a rose. My rose, I'm going to reframe it and say, slow down. I will be fine for the wedding next week. Everything will work out great, but just, just take a beat. So that is that was the lesson there for me. Carlin, I'm always reminded how fun this is to do with you because, you know, I have two kids, five and under, and you have four who are older than five. <laughs> Much, <laughs> and, it's, yes. and it's really fun to just be reminded of where we're at and the things that are the things, you know, like my big things for me now are not the big things where you are and the big things where you are now, I have years to get to. So I just always love your insight and I'm always just like, okay, yeah, Carlin. I'm just going to remember what Carlin said. 
<laughs> Don't roll your ankle. <laughs> Don't roll your ankle and just slow down, girl. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining this episode today. It was such fun to be back together again and to be with you. It's been great to have this conversation with Christina. So thanks again, Christina. You can all head over to entrepreneurista.com forward slash join. If you are looking to join the Entrepreneurista League, we would love to have you. And like always, I'm Jessica Abo. I'm Carlin Bushman. And we're here to help you put your best heel forward.